Welcome everybody. This is an alert triage for a phishing attack. This was very much uh, a long awaited process here and I'm very excited to get into it. This is specifically for Defender, okay? For Microsoft 365 Defender, I'm going to walk through exactly how I would investigate and mitigate a phishing threat. Now this took quite a bit of work to find all the right resources so feel free to drop a like on the video if you do find this valuable. And without further ado let's get into it. Alright so we will start from the very beginning here. Let's make it not so blurry. Okay, that looks like the best we're gonna get. So this would be the phishing email the user received. We would not see this directly, but I just want to go through from start to finish, right? So we see this email. Look at that. If you can see it, I'll scroll just for a bit even though it's blurry. I apologize for that. Um, this is from service.epaypal. And that pay has an I instead of a Y. So the sender is already suspicious. Uh, that's immediately a red flag. I wouldn't trust it. We see the response required. Just like all phishing emails, they're trying to create a sense of urgency. Hey, do this now. And further down, I don't even have to read it, we just see the login here. When the user clicks that login, that URL would be a red flag. And it would most likely take them to a fake PayPal account where when they put their credentials in, it would actually be sent to the adversary or the person that sent this phishing email. So we would analyze this in Microsoft 365 Defender. Microsoft Defender. What it would look like, something like this, okay? We see here there's an example that says email messages containing malware removed after delivery. Well, let's pretend that ours said something like user clicked a malicious URL. Something along those lines. To our left, it would show explore, okay? Uh, if it didn't show it here, we would just scroll down until we saw it. For some reason, it's not on this page because it's on the 365 security page, I see. Uh, when we pivot into the console, it would be a nearly identical screen, but on the side panel, it would show explore. So we would click that and it would take us to this page here. And Explore is our first great tool to use in order to determine and obtain a full scope of this phishing activity. So let's say uh, all we have is the URL, right? That, that sign in that if the user clicked it, we would get uh, you know, a red flag in our SOC analyst software that would have that URL. So I would just, instead of having sender address right here, I would have URL, okay? So I'd click the drop down and scroll down to URL, keep the equals any of, and then I would just paste that URL into here. Now what that would do is show me all of the users sent that exact same URL, okay? And then we would have the URL clicks. So who clicked on the URL? As you see, we have this. Let's just pretend that that's a user. So we do see that that user clicked the URL. And it would take us to this page here, which is the analysis screen. And so here, let's just start from uh, the top left to the right. We have analysis, which we can see on the side panel as well the analysis section would include everything here and it's just who sent the email the sender address the URL internet message ID as well as the time sent and with that information we can actually let's go over to this here if we had the sender IP address, we can search it in a tool such as VirusTotal, 
and we can include this in our escalation or include it in our investigation right because we would be escalating this to a client so uh, this for instance let's say we put the IP they said oh it has a hit for malware or malicious or phishing okay and all of these are security vendors and the less red hits the better obviously if it's all clean that's great but this for instance has one hit okay well we would just take the URL and we would include it in our overall investigation okay and of course we would get that sender IP information from the analysis section next we have the timeline and the timeline is exactly what it sounds like it would show when the user received the email as well as any interaction with the email so if they click the URL it would show up here user click the URL then attachments this is important for if the email included files or images it would have the file names on this page as well as their SHA-256 value and if you didn't know a SHA-256 value is a pretty much it's a unique identifier for a file in this instance okay <laughs> those uh, security heads are like well it's actually this this and this you're right but in this instance that's how we're about to use it now we can also include that SHA-256 value for any files we see on the attachments page and put it into here in this top section as well and we can include that in our investigation then we have URL up here. You see, me scrolling right. That's the URL. I'm just, I'm not trying to keep it zoomed in because it's a little blurry and it's annoying. That URL section would have all the URLs within that email, and we can further investigate any other URLs that we see. Then we have similar emails, exactly how it sounds. Any similar email to this one here. Okay, perfect. So we have a lot of of great uh, clues to include in our investigation as well as some OSINT that we obtained right we use a virus total as OSINT another great piece of OSINT that we can include is URL scan it's very bright I'm used to things being on dark mode <laughs> okay and we can uh, put the whole URL in here if we are certain there are no user credentials in that URL we can put it in here and perform like a private scan um, it's not giving us the option right now okay here it is private scan and uh, just so no one can accidentally click the URL or if there is potentially sensitive information a private scan would be the best um, and we can just put it into here click enter and it would show us any redirects it would show us the associated IP address of that dom uh, associated domain and again that would be something we can include in our investigation now if we do suspect credentials are found within the URL we would prefer to investigate that URL within a virtual machine because we do not want any credentials to be on any website even if it is a private scan it gets stored somewhere so we want to avoid that at all costs excellent moving right along advanced hunting queries so we're using Microsoft Defender now we would use KQL of course because that's what Microsoft Defender uses uh, it might use some other code as well but I know that KQL works out of the box. And let me actually see if I can do something here. So the type of KQL query I would run for this particular type of alert would be something like URL click events. And it would look something like this. Um, where uh, remote URL contains. And then it would be the bad URL dot, right? And it would look something like this. The great part of Defender is as you're typing, it uh, pops up suggestions. And I know the exact 
suggestions to click and everything. So, but yeah, it would look something like that. And what that particular query would do is show again all the users that clicked that URL. And this is great because you see that share link right there. If we click on that, we can then share the query with the organization that we are escalating the alert to, to again provide them more value and show them proof, hey, this was clicked by this user or however many users it's associated with. Okay. Next, I like to go to Sentinel. Okay, I like to go to Microsoft Sentinel. So we would uh, get the username of the user and just put it right here at that top search bar and we would head over to their profile. So this is a little bit out of order. Okay, and the first thing I do is check the sign in logs. Okay, so we know that the user went to this malicious website. Well, have we seen any unusual sign ins? Okay, and this page is great because it has the IP address with the location as well as the application that they signed into. Okay, the date and the time, obviously. It also has non interactive sign ins and interactive. And we can further filter it to, you know, go back to. A week or a month in time and we can even filter it to search for specific IP addresses if we think there's a potential malicious IP associated with this user we can filter their sign-ins and just use that IP and see hey have they signed into this IP after that of course we include all of our findings in our investigation I go to the audit logs now I tried really hard to find a page of the audit logs I could not find it, I apologize, but it looks nearly identical to this page. And what you would see there is things like user changed their password or they added a new device uh, to their associated account. Okay, that's all you would find in the audit logs. And if there's anything, you know, suspicious or near the activity time, I like to include it just in case. All right. So now the user clicked this URL. We know that that's bad. And it's always best to be proactive. So we want to reset the password. There's also a revoke credentials that's t typically up here. I don't know why it's not here. But uh, so we can reset the password and revoke the user credentials because we see this is a potential credential compromise, right? I personally do not see the point of a host isolation uh, and also this is coming in as a uh, defender alert right if this came in as a Microsoft defender for endpoint then I would look more at the isolation but this is leaning more on the risk of a credential compromise and a person can sign into using that user's credentials from any host okay um, so if we didn't see any like um, associated attachments or anything like that uh, there's not necessarily a need for isolation there is a debate for that but I digress all right and lastly we would want to block the URL and this is so the user doesn't go back to it or any future users do not go to it. And remember how I said on that left panel it would be Explorer? Well, at the bottom there are settings. So if you click Settings, scroll to Indicators, we would then click on URLs or Domains and we would add the associated domain for that malicious URL. Okay, so it doesn't happen again. All right, and that is an alert triage walkthrough for phishing. Now, it might have been a little bit fast. I wanted to include pretty much everything I do in a phishing alert um, investigation. I might have missed a step or two, but I doubt it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, feel free to go back through and go over it a few times if you missed something. I didn't want this to be a super long video right I was trying to provide all the information to you uh, so I hope that you all were able to gain some type of insight from this video and learn something uh, 
And yeah, feel free to subscribe for more cybersecurity content. And thank you for watching.